Hello everybody, greetings and welcome to Prog Monster. My name is Murph, I am the host of this show, a show dedicated to progressive rock and other forms of rock music. So we're starting a new mini-series today, which is going to be entitled In the Alternate Universe. So the concept for this came from my comic books, which I have a ton of, but it came, came I guess for me it started in the... Um, 70s when I was reading a lot of these comics all the time and the comic book series put out a or Marvel put out this sorry I can't seem to get my hat straight uh, put out this series called um, What If and the What If series was done by a character called the Watcher yes he's a guy that had a big chrome dome like me but his was bigger even bigger because he was so smart he needed extra space for his brains so as the watcher he would watch over all the stuff that was happening cosmically in the universe including multiple dimensions and other universes and in other and so the story goes for those of you who are not familiar with it um, he would watch alternate earth scenarios in which something in the Marvel Universe happened differently than it happened in the real one you know or in the real one but happened differently in the universe he was doing such as one like what if uh, what if the Avengers had never been you know and so we're going to do something similar along this lines and what I've done is I've taken five bands progressive rock bands uh, we're going to do this progressive rock this time. Maybe we'll do something else different next time if, if this goes over. So we have five progressive rock bands in which I'm going to take the lead vocalist for each band, which I've already done. And uh, using my dice, which you know I love to use, um, I will roll the dice for the four remaining bands vocalist. And the one with the highest roll will be um, put into the other band. So I've already done this, so I have all five vocalists from these five bands have been put in one of the other bands. And we are going to kind of do a what if this had happened or what uh, in the alternate universe, what if this took place instead. I want to see how this might go. Uh, in, in some cases, I kind of know which way it's going to go, but some cases I have no idea how this is going to go. So the first one we're going to do is called, is this band, Hawkwind. So Hawkwind was a band, and most, before we get started, all these bands came out roughly the same time period, late 60s, early 70s. For many of them, 1970 was the big year, the beginning for many of them. So what I'm going to do is each band is going to have a different vocalist in it than it originally had. In the case of one of the bands, I think actually just one of them. Yeah, I think it's just one of them. We're going to kind of do a little bit of a different scenario. When we get to that band, I'll tell you about it. So for this band, Hawkwind, which formed or which released its first album in 1970. Um, and that album was entitled, I think it was just their self-titled album. Yeah, it was just a self-titled album. Um, on them, which featured um, Nick Turner, sax, vocals, and percussion. You've got, sorry, I can't read my notes without my glasses. So we're going to need these for, so I can see through um, telephone booths and buildings like Superman, right? Yeah. If I take these off, you won't know who I am either, right? Okay, so uh, Howie Lind Lloyd uh, Langston, who Hugh Lloyd Langston, who was lead guitarist, uh, Nick Turner, of course, sax, vocals, and percussion. I, I believe I already said that. John Harris Harrison on bass, Terry Olis on drums, Dick Mick uh, Michael Davis on electronics, um, Mick Slatery on lead guitar. Oh, sorry, I think. Uh, I think I've gone too far. Uh, yeah, lead guitar and uh, Dick Taylor on additional guitar. So basically, those were the musicians in the band. The original 
Uh, the other guy was, of course, David Brock, but he's not in this scenario. He's been replaced by Derek Shulman of Gentle Giant. So what we're going to talk about now is about how does that work? Does this work at all? Does it work at all? We will find out. So the vocalist, Derek Shulman, of course, you all know, was the lead vocalist, primarily the lead vocalist for Gentle Giant. He takes over as lead vocalist for Hawkwind. So in this scenario, being a more, being the front man and more of a dominant character than uh, probably almost all the other guys in this band, he's going to take over the realm. Now, will this go into making uh, Hawkwind albums, which we all know are pretty much the same throughout their history, where they've gone from that space rock right through to the beginning, and they're still making albums that are that kind of space rock uh, kind of albums. This was primarily the direction that David Brock wanted to take him, but will Derek Shulman take him in the same direction? I'm not really sure yet. I'm not sure how he fits in here. He's definitely a front kind of guy, as you know, the guys in Gentle Giant have all said. So, and but his voice is much stronger than Derek uh, than uh, David Brock's vocals are. I think. I think he has more predominance in his vocals. Now I know in Hawkwind they did have some other guys come in and do vocals for them at times too because Brock, although he did lead vocals, wasn't a dominant lead vocalist that, that way. He was more of the front guy, you know. Um, so at this point in time, because he's a singer and being a multiple multi uh, instrumentalist himself. He's capable of playing bass. I believe he also played the recorder and uh, he had a few other weirder instruments that he played as well. But he had that really strong frontal heavy voice for a f a um, for a live performance. So in this scenario I don't believe he's going to have any more conflicts than David Brock had. I don't think there's much of a difference in who's leading at this point. He's definitely going to be the same, I don't know if he'll be exactly the same type of leader as David Brock, but I think he will be definitely asserting himself more um, just as much as David Brock would have asserted himself. So I'm not 100% sure who wrote the lyrics for Hawkwind. This is still a relatively new band for me over the last couple of years. But I know that Shulman had a, a large bit to play in Gentle Giants lyrics. So I suspect that being the frontal kind of guy that he is, being the lead vocalist, being a strong character at front, he will probably control the lyrics as well. Now, will they be the same kind of lyrics as they would have had in Hawkwind? Or maybe they might be a little bit more like what they had in Gentle Giant. My guess is that they'll probably lean a little bit more towards Gentle Giant. Um, the music itself, because it's going to be written, um, it may have a kind of a, a marriage of the two sounds. So you've got this kind of spacey sound with this kind of quirky kind of uh, pastoral but heavy multi-instrumentally layered songs that they had in um, Gentle Giant. There may be a little bit of both. I don't think you're going to get quite the um, multi-layered instrumentals that you would have got with Gentle Giant, but I don't think you're going to be as spacey as you would have gotten with Hawkwind either because he didn't come through that path and probably didn't want to pursue it. He probably would have been much more comfortable going in the direction that Gentle Giant went. But you have other guys here who might have a say in that too. So, um, me, I think it'll probably be a bit of a funny, a, a bit of a funny marriage here because I don't know that the instrumentation in in um, Hawkwind at the time might not been as good as it was in Gentle Giant. So they might have to tone that part down. And kind of keep their space element a little bit. Um, so I'm not sure how this was going to sound. I think you might get a little bit of that kind of quirky stuff going on in the background, but that 
not in the fore, forefront, but the spacey kind of stuff maybe going in the background. So you might get a little bit of both of them here. I'm not sure how long this would go on for. Um, would this work out? Could this marriage work? Would they stay together when they got further along, when they started adding different people to the, to the mix? Um, like Lemmy coming in on their third, I believe he's on their third album on bass and acoustic guitar because the original bass player uh, Harrison left. So in comes Lemmy Kilmeister, or Ian Kilmeister actually, Lemmy. Is he going to want to sing here? Or was he just happy to get in at this point in time? I think he was a roadie. My understanding is he was a roadie for them and they didn't have a bass player so he just picked up the bass and that was the beginning of it. So whether he actually had any kind of bass um, any kind of bass in the back in his background I'm not sure I suspect he probably had some kind of inclination he was a roadie after all most of these people have a musical interest so not knowing that much about Ian Kilmeister I would say that's probably the case so he comes in as the bass player and Simon King also comes in as the drummer uh, replacing um, the original drummer which uh, I'm not even sure who that is. It doesn't say. Anyways, you've got those two guys in there and then Del Dipmeyer on synthesizers as well. So the synthesizer part for Hawkwind is very important because it really gives that kind of spacey sound to their music. The drummer, pretty solid drummer, and then Kilmeister. I think Lemmy at this point in time is probably okay um, just playing the bass. Maybe he won't want to pursue any kind of vocals here uh, But if he did I'm thinking that Shulman might be okay with that because he was okay with his brother Phil and Kerry Manier playing also um, Also singing lead vocals in Gentle Giant, so he probably is okay with that um, I'm not sure how long this could go on for could it go on as long as this album or Hall of the Mountain Grill would they even exist these two would their sec fourth and fifth albums be like this or would they be more multi-layered and more multi-instrumental i think they'd be definitely would be not as spacey i think they definitely would be leaning a little bit more towards that multi-layered he may even try to bring in different people to try and make that sound happen but that's not always an easy thing to do because multi instrumentalists are not a dime a dozen he was fortunate to be in a band with his brothers and a couple of other guys that really worked well together that might not be easy to find here anyways uh, later on um, on the hall of the mountain grill they brought in simon house who played synthesizers mellotron and violin and then on warrior at the edge of time which is this album they brought in alan powell on the drums and Rob, this is where the change comes. Robert Cavell would have come in to do vocals, but do we really need him at this point? I mean, David Brock wasn't as comfortable doing the lead vocals, and so he brought in somebody to kind of take that role, but Derek Shulman's already here, and he doesn't need to have somebody come in, so I'm thinking that that guy doesn't come in, and that changes the whole sound of this album really does I think probably changes some of the sound on the previous album as well so you got Derek Shulman doing those vocals you got this kind of pseudo kind of marriage between Hawkwind and Gentle Giant sound with Derek Shulman doing the vocals it's I think I think at this point Hawkwind's going to change slightly and become more multi-instrumentalist I wouldn't be surprised if Shulman scours and looks for people to come in and play those multi-instrumental players and then maybe the whole group starts to change in that direction and becomes a lot more like what you would expect with him as a lead vocalist um and i'm not even sure would the name stay the same i i don't really see the name changing um it's already in place it's a good solid name I don't see him messing with that. I think that would that would remain the same. Now, how long this group would maintain together? Hard to say. I'm guessing it would be together as long as they're making some forward 
So if they're forwarding and their fourth and fifth album is getting better and better, um, maybe it stays together. But ultimately, if they don't get to that level of success that Derek Shulman wanted, I suspect that this band may uh, go the same way as Gentle Giant and kind of fold up and disappear and retire. And that's my play on this whole thing. Now, if you have a different play on it, you can put that in the comment section below. So for this alternate universe, Derek Shulman, lead vocalist, takes the band in a slightly different direction and turns them a little bit less spacey, a little bit more multi-instrumentalist, but they don't ultimately get to that level that makes him want to stay in the music, and so he'll end up folding the band eventually. And that's the way I see it. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this kind of fantasy alternate universe featuring Hawkwind. And tomorrow we will be doing episode... Two, well, t this is tomorrow. This will come out. The following day we'll be doing episode two. I hope that you can join me for that. If you've liked this series so far, the beginning, please hit the like button and subscribe. And any comments about this band, do you think this is possible? Or maybe I'm way off the target here. You know, let me know. And uh, please hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next episode. And we will see you then. Take care and have a good one. Bye.